Okay, hi everybody. Uh, once again, you know me, Craig DeVideo. It is April 28th, 2009. So depending on when you view this video, will dictate what your <laughs> will dictate what your knowledge base is. Um, it is considered week four of our Introduction to Television Studio course. Uh, today, I decided to challenge the students a little bit, and uh, we moved the whole entire studio out. We cleared the whole entire studio, barring a few things, and everything is out in the hallway right now. And uh, I'm going to, in front of the cameras, I'm uh, going to give a live seminar on how to use the ladder and how to have uh, the necessary safety precautions of the ladder. And then, of course, how to get up in the grid and move the lights around the grid. And then how to use the dimmer to control the lights that are up in the grid. So that's the objective of this video, is to give you all the necessary uh, training so you don't have to do this in class. Okay, I don't know which camera, don't, don't ever cut to this camera lesson. Okay, there we are, a little closer. So um, that's that. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start with going through ladder safety. At this point, we should go to the wide angle camera. Yeah, camera one. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So um, the ladder safety issue is a, a big deal around here at the Art Institute. Uh, the thing I give students... And you guys can make decisions on what you want to cut back and forth to now other than camera one, okay? You can, make, you can cut back to camera two or camera three if it's a better image. All right. So um, if the first advice I give students when I talk about ladder safety is going to the internet, which I hate saying this, and going to man falling off ladder QVC. Uh, what you'll find is a live television show where a, a poor young man who was an, an actor in the show, they were advertising a ladder that you could buy through QVC, and he was up on the ladder, moving the ladder around, and he misstepped, and he fell through the rung of the ladder and, and literally broke himself into pieces. He broke his back in a couple of places, and he's, and he's out of commission. I don't think he's ever worked again. And it's not a lot of fun to be in that position where you get hurt from a simple situation like falling off a ladder. Uh, my dentist, who was going to do a root canal for me in, the, in December of last year, fell off a ladder cleaning off something off of his gutter, and he broke two vertebrae in his back. And, uh, you know, there's just no funny story about falling. Even though we love America's Funniest Videos and we, get, we gain humor out of seeing other people get hurt, the truth is that it's no fun at all um, experiencing the pain. So we laugh at other people's pain, but, you know, when it happens to us, it's not too, much, too funny. So the point is that uh, when we talk about ladder safety, it's a big deal. OSHA, which is a, a standards committee, tells us that we have to have some rules for students using ladders. One rule is that you're never allowed to use a ladder alone. So I am going to need to have somebody from the actual control room to come out and be my spotter today and be my actor or actress today. And that'll happen in a few minutes. I don't know which one of you guys isn't doing anything. and You can go out and come back out and be my spotter. But you, one of you will end up being my spotter. But um, one rule is you can never use a ladder alone uh, in that you're not supposed to use the ladder alone or be using a ladder by yourself. Um, the Art Institute of Philadelphia's policy is that the, the door over here, if one of you, maybe camera three, can shoot the door, um, the door over here can never be uh, blocked in that you can see there's a glass. Yeah, now shoot the glass, please. Go to a wider angle, please. Yeah, there's a glass, shoot, zoom out for me if you don't mind cashers, please, thank you. The physical door over here has a glass panel in it and that cannot be obstructed. You can cut back to me now. Um, that cannot be obstructed uh, by uh, any type of props or any type of flats or anything because we need to be able to see in the room at all times, okay? So please don't obstruct the door when you're in here. Uh, if whether you're in here by yourself or not, the fact is that glass always has to be uh, open so we could see people interacting here in the television studio. Uh, there have been situations where people go up on a ladder or use a prop or a flat and something could fall and hurt them, so we need to see you at all times. That's the reason that glass needs to be unobstructed. When it comes time to use the ladder, sometimes this room is clogged up with props and rugs and flats and, and all sorts of things. For today's purposes, uh, we cleared out everything into the hallway so we could do the seminar correctly. So. Uh, alongside the actual ladder, here and on this side, there are some things I taped, and I even I taped a phrase you can't see it because that side has been ripped off, but over here it reads, no one is allowed to climb the ladder unless the second person is present to spot and assist them. So I actually have it on the ladder saying that you can't do this by yourself. 
So if, God forbid, you were to do it by yourself and get hurt, you know, nobody can say that the school didn't warn you. So two things. A, you're being warned during classroom time from the instructor, and B, you're being told by posted signs around the room, and they are posted. And three, it's also on the ladder itself. So there you are. It is what it is. You know, we've done everything in our power to, to ensure safety for you, right? The ladder is pretty big. This ladder is a great ladder. It only can, um, can only go up one side of the ladder. It's not a two-sided ladder. Uh, what I mean by that is we had a two-sided ladder, which I enjoyed very much. I liked it better than this ladder. But unfortunately, the ladder had one bolt break. And because one bolt broke, we couldn't repair it. We had to actually throw the ladder away and give it to maintenance. And they're able to make some use of it. Because OSHA, OSHA standard says that if something like this were to break, even at any level, can you get a close-up shot of this camera three and let them switch the camera? Let them switch to your camera. I get a shot of this as an example. So one of these bolts had broken, and with that bolt being broken, uh, OSHA standard says if anything at all that's being used by students or for safety purposes breaks, um, you can cut to a wider angle, like camera two or camera one now. Um, if anything like that breaks, then you get a brand new ladder. So the, the, the only other ladder available was this ladder. The first ladder had two staircases, this one has one, so it is what it is. So it's a, it's a ladder that we have to be, uh, we have to acknowledge we can only use one side, right? So when a spotter helps, they're helping hold down the other side of the ladder. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how to open the ladder, place the ladder, use the ladder, go through ladder safety. Then I'm going to go up into the grid with this ladder, and I'm going to move this lamp up here. So one of you can make a decision to shoot that lamp and then cut to that lamp. So we're going to be moving this lamp right here. Lamp, this lamp right here is actually plugged into a port called port number 12. I know you can't see that from the angle. You're on camera number three. But port number 12 is where the AC plug is plugged into. You can cut back to another camera, camera two or camera one at this point. Good, thank you. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to move that lamp first by unplugging the lamp from electricity. Uh, unscrewing the actual C-clamp or the holding clamp, moving the lamp down the pipe, or in some cases, but not today, unlock, could you shut that door please? We have, we have an echo. Thank you. Um, in some cases, taking the lamp off the grid, bring it down to the ground, and then walking across the studio to somewhere else in the studio, and then bring the ladder over there and bring it up back up onto the grid, right? Wow. I'm a little overexposed here with that camera. If this is camera three, you might want to tone that camera down a little bit with the CCU. Right, the exposure is way too hot on camera number three for me. Thank you. All right, cool. Uh, so uh, we're going to basically be taking the ladder out, setting it up, uh, moving the, uh, doing the safety lecture on the ladder, getting up on the ladder, and then moving this lamp from where it is basically right over to here. So we're just going to move it, you know, five, six, seven feet, just as a lesson. It's not gonna be rocket science today. It's not gonna be as complex as some of the things you're gonna actually be doing. What I opted to do as well, uh, I said one thing and then I went to do something else. I actually, did, I actually did turn on the lights up in the lighting grid besides this lamp. So lamp number 12 is the lamp that is not turned on. That's the one I'm working with. So I don't need to use uh, gloves or anything like that because the lamp is not hot. But the lighting grid is turned on. Lamps just put in randomly around the room. So sometimes I step into lighting and it's bright at one spot. And sometimes when I'm outside that environment, it's dull at another spot regarding the brightness of the SME, the subject matter expert in this case, right? So I wanted to give you that as a warning that as you look at this, if things are overexposed or underexposed, this was not lit for this lecture at all. This was just, I went and turned on the lights, brought them up to 50, 60%, and now they're pointing around the room. So that's what's going on. Okay. Thanks for watching, by the way, and being attentive, right? Okay. Uh, so first we're going to start with the ladder. I do have somebody in here to help me. I'm not going to call upon her yet to come out because I need to do some things on my own. As you see, I have a wired microphone here that's just randomly hanging, and I decided to do it this way today instead of having a wireless um, or having a wire tucked through my pants like it's the appropriate way of doing things. So this is a little bit sloppier, but I acknowledge this, that it's not the correct way of doing it. So when you're watching this video, be aware that it would be nicer if this were tucked in and tucked out, but nobody's going to be climbing a ladder with this. I'd rather be using a wireless mic than to be using a wired mic if that's the case. All right. 
So let's start with the ladder and the ladder safety issues. First of all, this ladder is fairly unwieldy, right? You grapple with the ladder, it's big, there's a chance it's gonna fall, you've gotta be physically strong to handle something like this, and if you're not, or if you're a little scared of it, you also should have more than one person helping you. Uh, truth is that the, before you go moving the ladder, you need to look up because there are things in the ceiling this ladder could slam into as you move it. So you don't just grab the ladder and start moving it around. You've got to look up, look at your environment up, look at your environment down and around you and decide, well, if I'm going to pick up this ladder, how am I going to move this ladder? Where am I going with this ladder? So if I make a decision that I would like to move this ladder and move the ladder over to right here as an example, you know, I know where I have to go with it, or if I like to move this ladder over to here as an example, this might be a better place for it for me, then I'm gonna first uh, have to make that decision before I go ahead and start moving. So I know I have to unplug the power supply first. So I'm gonna pick up the ladder, by picking the back of the ladder, and bring the back of the ladder towards the front of the ladder, moving the ladder up, and then I'm gonna have to pick up the ladder off the ground, right? You don't drag this ladder. You pick it up, you walk it around, you bring it to where you need to bring it to. And you control this ladder. Don't let the ladder control you, right? And then the ladder itself, of course, when it's an A-frame ladder, when it's opened, it's very big. It makes a lot of noise. It's supposed to make a lot of noise. It is a ladder. It is made of steel and metal, right? Okay, uh, one thing that has to happen here is all four of the feet of the ladder have to be on a solid, flat surface. If the ladder is up on the cyclorama, like it is right here, or the cyclorama does exist right here, and there's a bend in the wall, right? You don't put the feet of the ladder up on the bend. A mistake that gets made here in the studio is you guys might use things like these props, like these flats or this, what I call the holy wall, for what it is that still exists here. And if you go ahead and make use of this kind of thing, I'm gonna cut the camera too, right? Make use of this kind of thing, and this thing, these props, these flats, are too close to the cyclorama, and you don't have any room to get the ladder behind the flats with the L brackets, then you can't get back up in your grid. So you do have to design your lighting grid uh, in, in relationship to, thank you, thank you. You have to design your lighting grid in relationship to, I'm not even looking at the right cameras here. Uh, it's my fault to the set design. So you have to have the set design done on paper, then you also have to have the lighting grid done on top of the set design. Usually we use onion skin paper, so you can actually have some translucent, you can see through the top paper and see where the lighting grid matches down to the actual physical set design. But in our case, for today, we've got all the room in the world to move anything we want, right? It is what it is. Now, once you get all four feet stable, you have to make a decision, can you get access to what you need to get access to? Well, I'm going to grab my ladder and move my ladder back. Now, at this point, I'd like to introduce my, my assistant. Thank you, Alice. Alice is all dressed up nice today. She just came in from work. So, Alice, I'm going to ask you to come on that side of the ladder. And what you're going to do for me, Alice, is you're literally going to skip behind the ladder and put one foot up and hold the ladder down with one foot, okay. and it's hold both sides. Okay, that's all. And what this does for me is it gives me a little, a little weight, uh, and God forbid, of course, she can't stop me if I fall, she can't catch me if I fall, so it's not the spotter's responsibility to try to catch somebody or to stop them. Obviously, if she sees that there's an error or there's a broken piece in a ladder or a jutting out piece of metal that can cut me, well, then it would be a nice idea if she would tell me that. So having a spotter is another set of eyes, another set of ears, maybe another person to look around the environment and digest what's going on. But certainly they can't stop you know, an incident uh, other than to try to help you if you do, God forbid, get hurt. That's why they're supposed to be here. 
But what I like to do, and of course we have camera one, two, and three on different angles here. Camera three, before we switch to you, could you please get a close up of the juncture of the electrical plug that's plugged in from the lamp to the, um, uh, uh, to the actual outlet? It's the white versus black where the wire meets, right? And while we're doing that, while camera three is doing that, I'll cater to camera one and two now. Now you guys can of course move up closer if you felt like you needed to. You don't have to stay as far back as you want or you are now, it's up to you. Don't forget, you are allowed to do a little movement if you need to, thank you. So what I'm about to do is I'm gonna take a, a walk up the ladder and I'm gonna eventually get to that outlet. Now is camera three on that outlet? Okay, camera three, that's perfect. Camera three, could you zoom in closer to where the outlet, where the, the, the wire meets, the black plug meets the white plug? Can you get a close up of that, camera three? So camera three, stay there. Excellent. Good, thank you. That plug you're seeing right now is the actual AC, D, AC male versus DC, that, um, excuse me, AC male versus AC female plugs. Just like a plug in the wall, the normal outlet you have in your home. And these lamps are 120 volts. Could you switch to camera one and two, please? No, thank you. These lamps are uh, 120 uh, volt lamps. They're normal lamps, not like your washer and dryer or your refrigerator, which needs 220 or something like that. These are, or 240, these are normal 120 volt uh, plugs uh, and lamps. So they can work, work on any outlet in the room, except they're very powerful. They're 1,000, 2,000 watt bulbs. So those plugs you saw camera three plugged into have their own breaker, have their own actual physical fuse or breaker. So it gives us the opportunity to plug something in and for it to be a very, very high wattage draw lamp. Okay, so at this point I'm going to go up a ladder and you guys can make a decision on close-up wide shot, medium shot. Obviously guys, there's a chance this ladder is dirty and can have dust particles on it, so make sure that you uh, wipe your feet and that your feet don't have dust and debris on them. And then I'm going to cater a little bit to this wire here, so I have to be careful of the wiring. And if at any point audio cuts out, you do have to tell me that, okay, because I'm not going to be able to hear it. Now, when I climb up a ladder, you know, my whole objective is not to get hurt, right? So nothing is going to be as important as me not getting hurt. Even if my cell phone goes off in midstream and I'm up the ladder, I'm not going to answer my cell phone when I'm up at the top of the ladder. Um, certain people have done that. It's probably not such a great idea. So when I grab the ladder, I grab it with both hands. I make a decision how I'm going to climb. If you were, you know, um, uh, a tree climber as a kid, you know, this might not be so hard for you. Make sure my feet are clean and I start to step up the ladder. One at a time, and before I start walking up the ladder, I look around too. I mean, I look, I see a lamp right here, right? The camera should be on that lamp, maybe camera three, are you on that lamp? Or up, tilted up enough to see that lamp? Now you guys can follow me up, you can tilt up and follow me a little bit. Can camera three, can you open up the aperture a little bit for camera three, because camera three is kind of dark, yes? There we go, better, thank you. Um, as you see, this lamp has barn doors open, and if I go up to that lamp, you can cut the camera two or camera one now. If I go up to uh, that lamp too quickly, I can bang my face right into the barn doors, right? You gotta be very careful. So I'm gonna walk up towards that lamp, and here I am all the way up. I'm getting closer and closer and closer, and my main concern now is getting to this outlet. So camera three, you should be on a close-up of that outlet. Now, at this juncture, right, as you guys can hear me properly, right? This microphone is working correctly, yes? Okay, thank you. At this juncture, up here on the grid, there are pipes and connections and things like this that can very easily take a chunk out of your scalp, you know? You gotta be very careful when you're up here that you don't get hurt. Uh, my primary goal at this point is to get this uh, disconnected, unplug this from the wall. <coughs> In effect, unplug this from the electrical outlet. Could you get a shot of this, camera three? Camera three, that's you, Cassius. Can you get a shot of this? Okay. My primary goal here is to get this unplugged and to tilt up a little far farther, please, Cassius. Tilt up a little farther, not zoom in, that's it, good, thank you. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab the bottom and grab the top and I'm gonna slowly pull these apart. And as I pull these apart, the whole entire grid shakes. 
Now, now that it's disconnected, I can, of course, take this cable and let it hang. Please cut it over the camera, please. OK, good, right? I know you can't see me from the other cameras. You might want to move your cameras so you get a better shot of me here, right? Very good, thank you. That's why we have wheels on them, right? Very cool. I'm still in caches, right? Hi, caches. All right. Okay. You can cut the camera one at this point. I mean, I know you're on a, okay, get the camera. Okay, so I'm up here on the ladder still, and I did disconnect this cable. I wanted to make sure we made something clear. When I was disconnecting this power cable, I did not flip backwards on the ladder and, and hurt myself. A lot of people forget that you are up on a ladder as you're disconnecting the power, so please be careful of that. Now that this cable is hanging, right? Now that it's hanging, don't let it swap and hit the person helping me. In this case, it's you know Alice, right? You don't want it just to, to flip and hit anybody. Now that you have this extra plug, if you look up here, which I know from your angle you can't see, and I'll be showing you in a few moments, there's what they call a little ropey. A little ropey is something that's to tie cable up to. If you get this little this cable and slide it through the little ropey, you end up giving yourself an opportunity to at least not have the cable swinging down. Now, mind you guys and gals, I'm only using one hand. Right? I'm only using one hand. The other hand is firmly planted here, and I am not putting myself in a position where, you know, like on a bicycle, you say, look, mom, no hands, you know? And the old joke is, look, mom, no hands, and the next time the kid rides by, it says, look, mom, no teeth, right? Because the kid fell off the bike and hurt himself. So be careful up here. When I'm gonna move this lamp, I would, because of the strategy I would take, I would close these barn doors. And this lamp has four barn doors. Or close them as best as the barn doors can be closed. Of course, at this point, these barn doors are swinging back open because they, the, uh, the, uh, the screw and the bolt aren't tightened up anymore because they've been sitting in the same position for too long. It is what it is. But uh, I've got to make a decision at this point, guys, if I'm going to move my ladder or if I'm going to, from this position, going to try to move my lamp. Now I like to move my lamp from here, the position it's at, over to that pipe here. So I like to get it from here and move it over. A couple of choices I have, now that I'm up on the ladder, a couple of choices I have is to go a little taller on the ladder, and I am gonna step up one more step on the ladder. Here I go. So I am farther up in the grid. Now something to talk about before we continue, is your allergies, your allergies, your private allergies, your illnesses, if you've got asthma, things like that. Up in the grid here, there's a lot of dust particles. And I wouldn't want anybody to come up into the, up into the grid and then, God forbid, have an allergic reaction from the dust and debris that gets moved around up here, right? And you, know, and you have an asthmatic attack and fall because you're up here choking, right? So please be careful when you come up to the top of the ladder, OK? All right, thank you. Um, this actual lamp should be pretty tight up here. It should be difficult for me to move this. At this point, yeah, thank you for the zooms. They look very nice. I need a close-up of this up here. One camera, I don't know which camera is gonna provide me with that. Up here where my hand is. That's a very good zoom and tilt, Cassius. I wonder who taught you how to do that. Very nice. Right up here, can you see this? Up here, tilt up farther, please. Good, stop. Right up here, is an actual clamp, a physical clamp. And there's a bolt here that you need to unscrew. Some, sometimes you can do the bolt with your fingers, and sometimes people come up here with a wrench and they tighten up that bolt, and then that bolt is you know, impossible to un unlock unless you have a wrench. Now if you're gonna bring tools up here, by the way, the tools need to be roped down um, to your person, so I'd rather see you rope a a tool with a piece of string and put it on your belt so in case you drop it, it doesn't fall and hit somebody, God forbid. So by me unlocking this, all I'm doing is creating a little bit of a gap up here. Tilt up a little bit, Cassius. Create a little gap up here so I can effectively now push this lamp down the actual grid, right? So if, I don't know which other camera has a shot of me doing this, but uh, I'm gonna push this now from where it is down that way can we cut through the camera that shows that shot? Okay, that's fine. I'll go to camera two, right? So I'm going to grab this lamp and just move it down the grid a little bit. 
That was as simple as I did. I'm going to let go because I'm not going to try to stretch now and push my body out to stretch. I pushed at arm's length. I can't go any farther. I'm going to come back to my ladder. At this point, I'm going to get down. A quick examination of what my goals are. My goal is to move that lamp onto that pipe. So I need to move my, my um, ladder probably two more times. Let me think through what will be the best method to do this. Um, I'm going to move my ladder this way towards me. Stop. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Alice. I'm going to go back up on the ladder. I already set all the rules about climbing the ladder, knowing what I'm doing up here. So I'm not going to go get myself hurt. And once again, this lamp has been loosened up so I can move it down farther on my grid, right? Now I have to make a decision. I like to get this lamp from right here on this pipe Am I looking at that camera? Right here on this pipe to over to, as an example, this pipe right here. Can you get a shot of this, Cassius, where my hand is? So it's going to go from this pipe here to this pipe here. And to do that, you see, you now Cassius, tilt over a little bit, pan over, I mean, here. You can see I've got two things happening here. I have a safety chain on my lamp and I have a C-clamp on my lamp. Now in both cases, both of these need to always be locked or at least secured before you move forward. So I'm going to first tighten up my C-clamp. There are different names to this clamp. Some people just call it a clamp. I'm calling it a C-clamp. It's a shape like a C in this case. Now that the C-clamp is tight and the lamp won't move, and I need you guys to participate in this now. I don't know how you're going to do the camera operation, but you have to be able to see what I'm doing here. Okay, Cassius? Can you, can you get a close-up of this, Cassius? Okay. Up here, this safety chain needs to become unhooked. So you need to unhook the safety chain. And I'm doing it with one hand, of course. And I would do this with two hands, but I, I'm not... I'm not ready up here on this ladder, right? I'm in a bad position with this ladder. So the safety chain has what they call a carabiner. You guys recognize these carabiners? These are things that are all over the place. Now you can buy this for everything from your book bags. It has a little lock here, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this safety chain and we're gonna put it over this other pipe and bring it back through my lamp. And I'm gonna hook this back together. I know you can't see all this, and that's okay, because this is a live demonstration. This is not being done as a planned, scripted project, right? So with live demonstrations, not, not always do the cameras completely see what's going on, that's understood and I put my safety chain together on this other pipe. So now the safety chain is on this other pipe. And what that provides me with, it provides me with an environment where now I have the safety chain on one pipe and my C-clamp on the first pipe. This provides me with an environment that when I want to move this lamp and I take it off of this pipe, I have a safety mechanism still holding the lamp up to the grid. Now I have to move my ladder because I can't do this in the position I'm in. I can't get the leverage. Thank you, thank you. Taking a shotgun or a boom microphone into the studio today, and placing it on the floor in a microphone stand may have been a better alternative than me wearing a lapel, but it is what it is. So I am now gonna move this ladder 
over that way. So you're going to pick it up and you're going to walk over that way. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay, move over to your right. That's it. Right down. Let me take a look at what I have going on here. I don't want to have my back to you. That's why I'm trying to avoid having my back to you, right? Yeah, this is a good position for this. Okay. All right. Again, I'm going back up. To make sure that all three cameras have a, a good shot. Now, whatever camera, camera three, can you brighten up camera three? Is the aperture open up all the way? Thank you. Very cool. Appreciate that. Now, camera three, you can't see this lamp, so you're in a bad position. So cut back to camera number two, and then camera three, you have to move over. Camera three, you have to move over that way. Okay. And then get a telephoto zoom, full zoom of this. And the director, whomever is directing, you guys can choose which camera to cut to, but you know, make an effort to cut to this kid. Good, thank you. See up here, this whole C-clamp, tilt up a little bit, camera three. Okay, so this is your C-clamp up here, right? And then here's your safety chain. Zoom out a little bit, camera three. Good, here's your safety chain on the other pipe, right? So we're gonna move this lamp from this pipe to this pipe. So I need to unscrew this lamp. I need to loosen it. And the mouth of the C-clamp then has to be big enough to come off. Cut to camera two, please. The mouth has to be big enough to come off the pipe and then come on the other pipe. And then once it's on the other pipe, then I have to tighten it back up. Now I have to do this with one hand, okay? I can't do that. I'm not going to be able to do this with two hands. It has to be all one hand. And I really don't know the weight of this lamp. This lamp could be 15 pounds or it could be 30 pounds. I really don't know. So depending on you and your level of strength, you know, will dictate how easy this is. So that's why it's absolutely necessary to have the safety chain on because in case you can't hold the weight and you need to literally let go because you don't have the strength to burn and you have to have some controls there so you don't get hurt. On the next issue is, even if you are fairly strong, you may only have a five or six or seven second burn in your shoulders and your bicep and tricep and lower back. So even if you think you're strong, you might be able to get this up and then if you can't clamp it, you may only have one more attempt before you start weakening out. Um, because again, this is not a joke. This isn't a sport in a high school. This is you're up on a grid, you're up on a ladder. And if you fall, to, if you fall or something falls, you can kill somebody. So this is a big deal. So at this point, I'm going to grab the lamp by the, the, uh, the actual steel hold. I don't even know the name for this part of the lamp. And I'm going to take the lamp off the pipe. I'm going to move it over to this pipe. OK, you guys prepared? Everybody ready? Here we go. I'm going to grab the lamp, lift it off. You can see the actual lamp is off the grid. I'm going to bring it over and put it up on the other pipe. Now at this point, I would immediately tighten it up. And I can get to a certain point where once it's tight, it won't be able to come off the grid. So I only had to tighten up a few times. I don't have to tighten it up all the way so the metal meets the pipe. Can you get a close up of this, camera three? Full telephoto, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, is that it? Okay. You can see the metal meeting the pipe, right? So keep it loose, 
So I've moved it from lamp position one to lamp position two. Now what I would do here as well is I can grab this whole lamp. And cut to camera one, please, so you can see what's going on. And I can move this down even farther on my grid. Make choices of camera two or camera three now. It's up to you. Okay, so I can move even farther in on my grid. I can actually turn the lamp around to point it in different directions. The only thing that's going on right now is that where am I going to plug it in at? Right? I don't have an available outlet up here that's not being used by the lamp. And I certainly am not going to extend this power cable over five grid areas to reach my outlet. I could do that. It has been done before. You'll come in here and find that a lamp that's in the middle somewhere is, you know, the wire is wrapped all the way down to the other end, which is probably not a good idea, right? And if you even took a shot of this lamp over here, whichever camera can see this, maybe camera one can see that lamp over there. Can you point to that lamp over there? The one that's up in the grid, the one that has the wire hanging? There's a big giant wire hanging down there. Can you cut the camera one? You can see that big giant wire hanging. Of course, that's inappropriate. It's, uh, that's not professionally hung. You know, for some reason, the person who did that decided they just want to plug it in, and it's sloppy. And you'll see a lot of sloppiness. Cut back to camera two. See a lot of sloppiness here in a television studio environment regarding that. And that's not my fault. I'm only in here a couple times a week teaching, and it's not your fault. You only have one class a week, right? But the idea of leaving it in better condition than you found it is always applicable. So if you happen to come in here and you have time to get up in the grid and clean up the grid, please do so. These lamps need to be hung correctly. Now I'm going to pull this back towards me because I like to talk for a moment about something else. If you guys can see the way this cable is strung here, All right, which camera one? Camera two. You see the way this cable is strung? It's strung fairly neat. It has one bigger loop here, but that's you know, nothing to be worried about. Fairly neat, beautifully done. The actual lamp's wire is hanging next to the lamp. The lamp, the wire is not hanging in front of the actual barn doors, right? And this is the proper way of having a, a lamp wired or spooled up. And uh, our in-house television technician, Cal Davies, also has some still photos, which I laminate and put all over the walls and all over the cabinets, instructing you on how to properly use a safety cable and wire and how to improperly do it, because he's taken some still photos in here when people have wired this up sloppily. And the only reason I use the word people is because it has to be a human who did it, because there, there are no aliens taking the TV studio class. Could you please uh, show this lamp here, one of the three cameras, maybe camera number three? Could you zoom in on that lamp right there and show the wiring there on that lamp right here, the one that's right in front of me? Right there, the one that's on right here? That's it. No, no, right in front of this. Tilt up. This lamp right here. Cash, look at me. Look at my hand. Right there. Right here. Can you zoom in on the wiring and how it's all spooled up and crimped up? Cassius. I want a close-up of the wires, Cassius. That's what I want. I'm sorry if I'm not asking that question correctly. Thank you. Keep going. Keep going. Go, 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 go. Okay. So you can see how sloppily that wiring is set up, right? It's terrible. What a mess. And, um, and I don't respect that. I think that's bad. It's a bad thing. And somebody decided to put that up there like that and have left it like that. And, and what's, what's, bad, what's worse about it is that we all have seen that and never corrected it, right? And, uh, and in the beginning of today's uh, seminar, I think actually it actually was Cassius who asked me, am I going to be using gloves today? And I said, no, because I'm not going to be handling hot lights. This lamp is cold. And because it's cold, I don't have to worry about it. I'm not actually going up there and, uh, and concerning myself about getting myself burned. But if I were to go over that light, I might need to put a set of gloves on so I don't get myself burned, right? Yep. Okay. So the next issue is where am I going to plug this in at? Of course, we have to make that decision. Or we don't. So for the minute, I'm just going to bring this back here towards me. And now that I'm in this position, we'll see if you guys can follow action. Again, I'm going to remove this safety chain.
I'm doing it with one hand. If I do it with two hands, it's a little bit easier, of course. Leaning in on the ladder with my chest cavity provides me with an environment where I can lean in and I'll have some, some stability, right? I wouldn't reach out to my left or reach out to my right. That's not safe unless I'm leaning on the ladder. We'll move this back to here, which is the first pipe. I'll bring my safety chain around the two pipes in question again. Put my safety chain back on, unlock my lamp, unscrew it. So then close the barn doors up a little bit. I'll take my lamp off. It's not quite loose enough. Take my lamp off and bring it on to the original pipe it was on. Tighten up the bolt. Come down on the ladder. And in some cases, while I'm right where I am, I can move the lamp over, right? There are some methods of doing this that you don't have to get hurt, certainly. And at this particular moment, I'd like to thank Alice for being a, our lovely assistant. What do they say in Bob Barker, right, with the Wheel of Fortune? Um, yeah, at some point, you know, you guys have to get up in that grid as well and move some lamps around. That's, this camera is way too hot. Thank you for adjusting that. Thank you. And what we're going to do now is we're going to have a, um, uh, a change of, uh, of, uh, of teaching. So we're going to need to go over to the dimmer at this point. So we're not going to stop tape necessarily, but we are going to have to change positions a little bit with the cameras. And um, we're going to put this ladder away first. So I'm going to put the ladder away. You do not have to stay for this. <laughs> Thank you. What we're going to do now is you guys can swing your cameras back. Do not stop tape, please. Turn the house lights on, please. I'll do it. I got it. I got it. Could you turn that monitor around so I can see it? What we'll do is maybe we'll get this camera, camera one. Why don't you come all the way over here, and then you can come right next to the uh, console and be on a wider angle. Just bring you right up, and you can be on a wide angle and tilt straight down. That's this camera. And then what's, this is this camera three. And you could be on a wide angle, camera two, I guess, and kind of, you're gonna end up needing to maybe come up and get the lights. Okay, yeah. They will make you in charge of the lights. Okay, you're not gonna be able to, you're not gonna be able to get in focus, you're too close. So just stay wide. Stay wide. Yeah, stay wide. Hmm? Yeah, you're gonna be the one videotaping the lights, okay? That'll, 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 that'll be your job to try to get the lights. Now, if you come over here for one second. Yeah. Let me just remember the safety cable here, right? Security cable, head all tight. So you pulled your camera off the tripod. Okay. Let me 
Let me make sure I'm on 7 point. That's as close you're going to get. Now, there's a thing called macro here, and I'm going to put your camera in macro. There you go. Now you're in focus, yeah? How's that? Amazing, huh? Let's bring it up even closer. Sure, I can't see it. Yeah. I need a stool. Or there you go. <laughs> How's that? Okay, you guys can still hear me correctly, right? You can't come any farther. That's as far as your camera can get. Okay. And we are still in record, right? Yes, guys? Yeah, we're still in record, right? Could somebody tell me how much time we have left on the tape? <coughs> that was a one-hour tape. How far are we into the tape? Fifteen minutes? Okay. That should be enough. Okay, so at this point, uh, we're coming back to camera number one. And um, why don't you get a shot of me, and then you can make a decision when to pan down to the camera, okay? So you'll be some, you'll do some camera. I'll be talking to this camera. So go to camera three, please. Okay, go wide, please. Not that close. All right. That's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about her. She's, she's part of the show, as much as I'm part of the show. Okay, so what we're going to do at this point is we're using the ambient uh, fluorescence in the room. That's why the image is pretty green, and that's okay. Uh, at this point, we're going to talk about, and we have 15 minutes left in this tape before we have to change tapes. So we're going to talk about the actual physical dimmer board, which is right here. So cut to camera one. Thank you. Very good. So here's our dimmer board. There are several things on this dimmer board we are going to be playing with and several things we're not going to be playing with. I'm going to tilt the, the dimmer board up like this. I'm going to bring your camera around a little bit like this. Maybe you can tilt up like that and that will be a better shot of the dimmer board, right? And I will make sure it's in focus. Okay, there you go. I'm using the macro focus of this professional lens, which is not part of the normal focus. So that's a different experience. Um, that's something you probably won't learn actually in this course. But let's go back to the actual, actual dimmer board now. Yes? Okay. So the dimmer board has some things that you're not going to be taught in this lecture. There's some submasters here and submasters here that we don't actually use in this introduction to uh, Televin Studio course. This is a very fundamental course. Certain things we're just going to avoid. So the submasters are always going to be in the down mode. Okay? All right. There's a key that doesn't exist, so you can't turn it off and on. It's always on, right? Don't worry about it being off and on. There's a button called blackout. Now, this blackout button, it's an actual toggle. I see in your case, camera three, you could be on a full close up of this if you want to zoom in, right? You can try to zoom in on these buttons while I'm doing it, okay? Cassius, you hear me? Okay, so I want you to zoom in, Cassius, all the way to a close-up of these buttons while I'm flicking them. Make sure they're in focus while this camera is on a, just a wider angle of the training going on, okay? So there's a button called blackout, and this blackout button allows you to switch all the lights on or off. You know, with the empty circle in black, that means no light. With the circle filled with light, then that means the lighting system is on. Of course, you have full power, right? There's obviously a fader here, and this fader says the word master. It goes from 0 to 10 on both sides. You have a 0, to zero 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is the master lighting uh, on-off. So you, it's a regulator. It has a transformer built in that you can have a, no light, a little bit of light, a lot of light, an immense amount of light, or full power to these lamps. So the master is either in 0 or all the way to 100%. That kind of makes sense, right? Right next to this master switch, there are two more faders. One says scene number one, and one says down here, scene number two. Now, the scene one and scene two have very specific meanings for those people who can appreciate theater. Um, if you decide to talk of theater, you know, on one side of the uh, stage, they may have one lighting situation. On the other side of the stage, they have a secondary lighting situation. And uh, we're usually only using one lighting situation. So keeping them both up is what most people do, which is actually inaccurate because scene one starts at zero and goes to 10, and that's this one. Scene two, the zero starts up here and goes to 10. So this would be full power for scene one and scene two. So I just want to verify that. But it seems like 
most of the time, everybody puts all the faders just up to the top, and they think that means it's at full power, and it's, it's misleading. On this side of the actual dimmer board, you'll see it says scene one over here, and over here it says scene two down here. So the scene one up here controls all the lights, one through 12, because you have 12 lamps. So these are all the lights. For scene one, and then scene two, which is at the bottom, scene two, you can control all those same exact lights as well. So it's up to you to make a decision what you're doing with your lights and why you're doing things with your lights. So let's go through one light at a time, okay? So we're going to bring scene one up to 100%. And then we're going to look for lamp number one. Now, if you look up in the grid, and this will be camera two's job now. So turn around camera two, face that way. If you look up in the grid, we have lamp number one up in the grid over here. You have to help him pull his cables, right, because he can't do it by himself. It's OK. You have lamp number one up in the grid, and lamp number one up in the grid. And if you look at this, I don't know if that camera is on a good shot or not. Lamp number one is plugged in to option one. This happens to be a floodlight at this point, right? And you can see the number one is painted onto that juncture box. See that painted number one up there? See that painted number one up at that juncture box? Can you, can you zoom in on that number one? You're in front of a pipe, you probably can't see it. How about camera three? Can camera three see that number one? Are you in a better position to see that number one? No. Okay, well, we'll get to it. But let me come over here, and this camera should be the one we cut to now. Good. I'm going to grab number one, stay on light number one. I'm going to bring up number one. I'm going to bring down number one, bring up number one, bring down number one, bring up number one, bring down number one, bring up number one. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't we do a split screen? Choose a white pattern, and then do a split screen between camera, that's good, uh, opposite. Keep going, keep going. Just choose opposite. That's it, excellent, excellent. So could you also create a little border on that for me? Create a little border on that for me, a little white border, top left-hand corner. It says border, soft, and this is border, it's a dial. That's soft, put the border on, yeah, a little white border, thank you, very good, excellent. Wow, you guys are accomplishing a lot today, I love that. So we're gonna do light number one, as I dial up light number one, you see light number one lighting up. As I dial down light number one, you see light number one dialing down. Again, full blast, light number one, light number one comes down to zero. And you can make a decision anywhere you wanna be inside of this 100%. Now I'm gonna show you something here, very important. I'm gonna bring this up to 100%, and I'm going to bring the master down. So the master can also dictate how bright the lights are. I can bring the master up to 100%, and I can bring the scene one down. So there's a couple of ways of dictating the brightness of that particular lamp, right? That makes sense, right? OK, well, camera number two, please pan over to, camera, to lamp num the second lamp in line, which will be uh, well, let me see. Go to the third lamp in line. The third lamp. Okay? Now we'll look at now, we'll look at lamp number three, right? Lamp number three should light up. Did lamp number three just light up? There it is, lamp number two. So now I'm using lamp number two. I increase the light on lamp number two. Lamp number two goes up to 100%. Decrease the light in lamp number two so on and so forth, gives you that opportunity to increase or decrease the lighting on those lamps. Okay, can we please get out of the, um, the white pattern, just cut back to, that's good, thank you, and just, we're gonna go back to normal cuts now, and um, you're gonna cut back to camera number one, please? Good, thank you. So if you were to say, as an example, you wanted to have light one, I'm going to turn the black out completely, okay? Light one, light three, we'll put all the odd lamps, odd number lamps on scene number one, right? Five minutes, good. And then we're going to put all the even lamps on scene number two, 
right? That makes sense so far, guys, right? Now, you need to be wide angle for this, wide angle, OK? And I'm going to turn on the lights now. Now the lights in the studio are on, right? And you can see some of the lamps are on. And if I have them, and both of them are on 100%. Now, right now, it's only scene one. Right now, it's only scene two. Right now, it's only scene one. Right now, it's only scene two. Keep shooting. Let me turn off the house lights. So what you see is right now only scene one is active. Now only scene two is active. Only scene one, and I'm going to stand at 50% so it's not so bright. Only scene two. Can you pan around the room a little bit? Yeah. Only scene one is active. Only scene two is active. Only scene one is active. Only scene two is active. Now, why don't you dolly your camera all the way to the other side of the room and then turn it around? Go, turn 360, turn to your left. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop. No, no, no. What I want you to do for me, if you don't mind, please. Dolly over there. Zoom out to a wide shot, please. You're, you're not in a wide shot. You zoomed all the way out? Yeah. Okay. Just shoot, shoot, shoot this side of the room over here. So this is, as an example, once again, scene one, that's scene two. That's scene one, that's scene two. OK, could you please cut to uh, camera one, please? So you can see scene one, scene two. Scene one, scene two. If you look, there are little red lights here that also dictate that you're going up towards one particular lighting function or not. See here? Wait, there's a little red light there. You can't, you can't see it from this camera's angle. Two minutes? OK. Three minutes? All right. I'm going to bring a lot of light up. I'm going to kill all this. This is every lamp in the room at 100%. Now, unfortunately, this is what we call the introduction to television and studio lighting. The students have a habit of putting all the lights up just at 100%. You can shoot me, yeah, that's fine. All the lights happen to be up at 100%. There isn't any real lighting design. That's not the way it's supposed to be, right? You're supposed to, cut to this camera, please. You're supposed to be thinking about, instead of putting every light up to 100% and keeping it at 100%, you're supposed to be thinking, well, should these lights be a little bit dimmer? Should these lights have a little character to them? And you know, you put them at different volumes. I call it volume. You know, everybody understands that from their radio that this lamp can be a little brighter than this lamp. This light can be a little brighter than this lamp. You know, so on and so forth. So you might want to think about that as you're doing your lighting project, as you're thinking about how I'm going to design my set will dictate where we are with our lighting design, right? Um, switch back to this camera, camera three. And for all intents and purposes, uh, I know we're at the last two minutes of the tape anyway, but it's been one full hour of lecture. And this is about how long it takes to do this lighting lecture, and I am done. So thanks for watching. Don't hit stop on the VCR, please. And uh, uh, that's it. I hope you took some notes. And that's the end of our lecture on April 28, 2009, right? Am I correct? That's today's date. And it is now 10.18. And my students this morning want to take a break. Okay.